Welcome to part two of the ROS Prototype to Production on Ubuntu Core video series, where we're talking about taking your existing ROS Prototype to Production by packaging it as a snap and shipping it on Ubuntu Core. Today, we're going to be using ROS on Classic Ubuntu to create a prototype for the TurtleBot. You may be well beyond this step already, but we need an example prototype that we can use throughout the rest of the series as we move toward using Ubuntu Core. Remember that this is also a blog series. If you prefer to read it, the link is in the description below. Now, there are a ton of possible configurations for the TurtleBot. Some use a Kinect, others use an Astro Pro or a RealSense, etc. I want this example to be usable by everyone with a TurtleBot, so I'm going to cater to the lowest common denominator here, which is the Kabuki base. Now the prototype will be simple. We'll make the Kabuki randomly wander around, bumping into things and correcting itself, utilizing both the bumper sensors as well as the cliff sensors. The thing looks so much like a Roomba I figure we might as well make a move like one too. Actually making this prototype is where the community around the TurtleBot is incredibly useful. Everything we need is already written, we just need to put it together. So let's get started. Now there are a few prerequisites that you'll need to satisfy before you can follow along. You'll need a Xenial install. It can be virtual as long as you can pass USB through to it. Now we're going to use ROS Kinetic here, so you'll need that installed and configured. Follow the ROS documentation for doing that, the link for which is in the description below. Finally, you need to know enough about ROS to know what a launch file is and how to use it, which currently means you need to go through at least the first eight ROS tutorials, the link for which is in the description below. Alright, let's make this prototype. The first TurtleBot specific ROS package we'll need is the ROS wrapper for the Kabuki driver. It contains the node responsible for communicating with the Kabuki itself. The Kabuki connection to the computer is via USB. By default, the driver expects it to be available at dev Kabuki. Getting the Kabuki there instead of just dev TTY USB whatever takes a UDEV rule. Thankfully, installing the driver pulled down a dependency we can use to do that pretty easily. So now let's test to make sure everything is set up correctly and we can communicate with the robot. Once it launches, you should hear the Kabuki sing a little tune. If that doesn't happen, check to make sure the UDEV rule is working before continuing. We're going to leave this running for now, so I'll open another session to continue. The Kabuki driver is most of what we need. The minimal launch file brings up enough nodes to obtain data from the wheel drop sensors, cliff sensors, etc. But most importantly, it exposes the ability to command the robot to move. We'll take advantage of this now by making sure the Kabuki random walker is installed. Now, it may already be installed as a side effect of installing the driver, and you can see that's actually the case for me here. Since we've left the Kabuki driver running, all we need to do is launch the safe random walker launch file out of this package. That will bring up the necessary nodes to command the robot to move, as well as handle sensor feedback in order to get around obstacles. When the system finishes launching, you'll notice the robot begin to randomly wander around. If it collides with something using its bumper sensors, it'll back up and rotate trying to get around it. If it notices it's about to drive off a cliff, such as your steps, it'll stop and rotate again. Go ahead and stop both launch files with Control c These two pieces make up the entirety of our prototype. However, if we leave it as is, there's a limitation. The only UDEV Simlink location supported is Dev Kabuki. That works on this system, but what if another user has it elsewhere? Or what if we couldn't use that exact Simlink in a snap? We'll talk more about that in a later part of the series. For now, let's distill these two launch files into a single launch file that represents our prototype and make it a little more configurable. First of all, create a new ROS workspace for this prototype. You can put it anywhere, but I'm just gonna put it in my home directory. Now, create a new package within that workspace to contain our prototype's launch file. It should depend upon the two packages we know we need, namely Kobuki Node and Kabuki Random Walker. All right, let's create a launch directory and place our new launch file within it. This file will be largely based upon Kabuki Node's minimal launch file, so let's go ahead and open that up for reference. We're just gonna copy the entire thing into our launch file and clean it up a bit. This diagnostics aggregator is for debugging purposes and it's not something we need in our prototype. 
We don't need the publication of transforms to be optional for our prototype, so we'll remove this argument from the launch file. However, we do want the serial port configurable, so let's add that as an argument called device port. Now, we'll remove the parameter that was using the argument we removed, and add the device port one. I know from the Kabuki Nodes documentation that it supports a different serial port via the device port parameter. Finally, while we don't need to make any changes to the safe random walker launch file, let's just include it here so our prototype only consists of a single launch file. Alright, so we're done with that. Now we need to modify this package's CMake lists to actually install that launch file. I never bothered with this in the past as I mostly ran my ROS projects from source, but this is important. When we make this into a snap, it won't be running from source, it gets installed into the snap. Without this rule, the launch file wouldn't end up there. Okay, we're done. Let's build this workspace. All right, now let's test our final prototype. You'll see the robot sing its little tune again and immediately begin moving randomly. So now we have our prototype contained in a single launch file where we can use a different serial port very easily. That's it for part two. I hope you were able to follow along. In case you ran into trouble, the ROS project used here is available for reference. The link is in the description below. In the next part, we'll go through the process of packaging this prototype as a snap. I hope to see you there.